Today on Street Riding American Style, we're going to take a look at four different cars from four different shows during our travels this year. From Osage City, it's a 1944 Deluxe Coupe. From Wichita, Kansas, a 1965 Ford Mustang. From Scranton, a 1941 Chevy Sedan. And from Starbird Devlin Car Show, a 34 Ford Coupe. And then I'm going to finish up what I started last week with Mark Bauer as he teaches me the finer points of metal fabrication. This is all coming up next on Street Rotting American Style. Support for Street Rotting American Style is provided in part by Kansas BG Incorporated, a distributor of BG products. Kansas BG is dedicated to the development of preventative maintenance service in vehicles for consumers and fleets. Kansas BG provides the driving community with products and services of automotive maintenance. More information can be found on the web at kansasbg.com and bgfindashop.com. And Ren Radio. Ren Radio can be heard from the web on your computer or smartphone, playing oldies from the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. Oldies like Elvis, Chuck Berry, and the Skyliners, and many more. Nothing but oldies. Ren Radio is online all the time, on the web at wrenradio.net. They make you look, dream, and sometimes even wish. These are street rods, built or just owned by those who have the same passion. My name is David Wolf, and along with Simon McCormick and Patricia Brown, we travel to admire these passions. These are works of art and are designed with the personality and the ingenuity of the owner in mind. Built in garages, barns, and even under shade trees in communities all across this great land of ours. This is more than just a hobby. This is an addiction. This is Street Rotting American Style. David, you know how we go to these car shows right. and we find a ton of cars. Yeah. We always seem to have extra cars that we can't fit into the shows. What about them? I say we do a special show today just for those guys. I think you're right because yeah. there's always those extra cars we want to cover. And they're cool and we want these guys to yeah. see them. Let's go. Let's do it today. Come check them out with us. I've been scoping out hot rods all day. The wind is blowing and now finally I'm blown away because I found this classic beast. I finally found its owner, John. John, tell us more about this majestic piece of art. Well, it's a 40 Ford Coupe, a deluxe. In 1940, the 40 hour work week went into effect. Life magazine cost 10 cents and race car driver Mario Andretti was born. It's got 283 Chevy in it, about 300 horse, T5 transmission, 411 Fosse track, nine inch under it. So you, you've got done your homework a little bit, you know a little bit about this car. Right, right. Did you build it? No, no, we had to buy it. You had to buy it? Yeah. Last one we had got rear end and totaled out. Oh. So we had to buy a new car. Why the 44? I've always liked 40 Ford since I was in high school. I finally had a chance to buy one a few years ago. And then that happened and started looking for another one and found this one. We have so much fun with it. We come to different car shows around. You meet a lot of nice people, you yeah. know. We got a lot of good friends that travel with us. So you do travel around these car shows. You don't trailer this beauty. No, you drive it. no, it's not trailered, it's That's a driver. Awesome. What are you gonna do in the future? Uh, well, I wanna put a fuel injection system on it soon. I might change out the 411 and get a little more taller gear for the highway. Right on, get down the highway right. a little faster. Right. right. But it's kind of fun having them low gears in town, though, isn't well, it? Well, it's kind of fun. You can make, you can make a little noise with it. <laughs> that guy wants some competition, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. The louvers in the hood, is that, is that something that you uh, were attracted to when you bought the car? Or? Well, I had louvers on the other car, and it helped with the heat a little right. bit. Right. You don't have big opening like you do on some of the newer cars to so move a lot of air. Let the air flow go right. through a little bit better, so right. keep, your, keep your heat down. Makes yeah. Sense. The interior is gorgeous. When you went to go pick this thing, I know you were forced to because of an unfortunate circumstance. What drew you to this one? Was there one aspect yes. to it? A lot of things you've already mentioned, the stance of it, the color, the interior was beautiful. Uh, you know, it's just so many things. It's got a nice motor in it. That's all just been built. Yeah. So getting a lot of good mileage. What draws me to it are, this, are the, we call these reverse chrome, right? Right. That's awesome with the white walls. The chrome yeah. on the white, is a, it just looks awesome. If you're wanting yeah. to look something that's classy and sleek and old school, that's the way to go in Uncle Si's opinion, because I think it's awesome. So, it's an all steel car. All steel. Do you know what the chop is in it? 
chop. It hasn't been chopped at all. It's been dropped in the front about. There's no chop in the in the. No, it's really. About the same height they came. So we just put a little drop in the front and it gives, us, drop that, in the front. It gives us the illusion. Yeah, yeah. Are you that this guy doesn't know much about 44. Huh? Well, no, because what they had in the old days they had a little reflector that you could look up to see the stop the lights. The prism. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a lot of these cars had those back then. Stock. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So that's. Well, I'll tell you what, man, I love the car. It's it's sleek, it's classy, it's cool. But I got yeah. one more question for you. Okay. Can we fire up this bad boy? Yeah, we can. Let's hear it, brother. Okay. Last week, I wanted to see what tools it took to fabricate metal to restore a worn out street rod. So I went over to Mark Bauer of Bauer Auto Restoration to see what tools he uses. He's got me building a lawn ornament, but I'm using the same tools he uses on his street rods. So I'm going back now to finish what I started. All right, you've got the plasma cutter over here, mm -hmm. but my stereotype image of a plasma cutter is usually a big table where the, the arc is coming through, but this is not even that close to that size. No, this is really about the size of a toaster, and this machine here has the capabilities of cutting up to quarter inch plate steel. Quarter inch? Mm -hmm. So you use this a lot now? I use it quite a bit. So we use, anytime we need to do any cutting, we use this as much over as Over the cutting torches? Mm -hmm. Cutting torches are kind of like obsolete, right? Yes, it is. really is. Unless you're wanting to heat a piece of metal up, we don't even really use it for cutting okay. metal. And you got to ground it. we got to ground it. Okay. You get this going, and then I just start tracing it. You touch it. the All metal with it, hold it perpendicular to your work, pull the trigger, and have some fun. Okay, I want to have some fun. Here we go. But first, safety. Safety first. Safety first. That's right. So I would be very impressed. I'm saying safety first. Okay, here we go. So put it straight down and pull the trigger. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, real easy. Okay, now I get it. Stay within the line. All right, Mark. I, I think it came out pretty good. I don't think you did too bad a job. Not, not too, too bad. Not too, we ain't too bad. That was pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> All, right. All right. Body and the feathers are done. Right. Next spot, where? We are gonna work on the beak. The beak. Yeah, we'll, and we will use the shear and the brake and the shrinker. Okay. All in the same part. So brake, shear, shrinker, mm -hmm. all together next. This sweet 65 Mustang was a barn find, but now you can find it on the road with Jim behind the wheel. We have it next here on Street Rotting American Style. Tell me exactly, what are we looking at here? This is a 1965 Mustang Fastback. In 1965, the Righteous Brothers, You've Lost That Love and Feelin' hits number one. SpaghettiOs was first sold, and Sonny and Cher make their first TV appearance on American Bandstand. What have you done to this car? Well, when I, when I got the car, I pulled it out of a barn. Uh huh. And it was, there was nothing there. There was no front end, no, no engine, so no transmission. So this truly was a barn find? Yes, it was. So, okay, so I, I cut you off, I apologize, because I, when, when I hear a barn find, it always catches me up for a loop. So barn find, but what condition was it in? Uh, really poor. Really poor. <laughs> like I said, there was no engine, no transmission, no front sheet metal. The doors were all caved in, the quarters were caved in. Oh. They used a tractor to shove it around when it got in the, got in the way <laughs> and stuff, okay? So you can imagine what, what it looked like. So you had green John Deere paint on this and case yellow, whatever it was, it was moved around without a tractor they had it. <laughs> That's kind of sad, isn't it? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know what they had? I don't know. I really don't. Okay. You know, I mean, he, this guy just had several Mustangs there. Right. And uh, I asked him if he'd sell them, and he said yes. You s sell them? You yeah. got more than one? I got two of them. You got, so one for parts, or one to just build? I built both of them. So you built both, you still have both of them? No, I sold the first one. Oh, okay, so you, this one has a little special part in your heart? This was for me. Wait, this was you. built the way I wanted it. Okay, so when you say built the way you want it, what does that entail? Well, what I put in the engine, I put the four speed in it and so on and so forth like okay. that. What's the engine got? It's just a regular 302 block, the roller block for the roller cam. And oh. then it's got GT40 heads and, and then it's got the old stuff in it. 
Wait, what kind of old stuff? Well, it's got a tri-power. You misled me when you first started. It's just a little engine, just a regular engine that came it with. It is. No, it's rollered. It's tri-powered out. It's... That's pretty normal for today. <laughs> you know? Okay, you don't see this in a Prius very much, right? No. No, okay, so when you say for today, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, what kind of horsepower do you think is in this thing? Uh, it's. It really doesn't put out a whole lot. Uh, it puts out 260 rear wheel horse. Okay. So when it hoods up though, it looks good. That's the idea. And when you come into a stop sign, sound good? It rumples. It rumples. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? Yes. What's the comments you hear from other people when they see this car? Oh, they just they just love it. It looks so good. Uh, the paint's nice. It's, it's nice and straight. You know, and, and it's an old car and they like that. Right. They like the old style. But old style, and you said paint, this is not the old style paint this, this Mustang came with. What is this color? Uh, this is a 2006 Dodge Midnight Blue. Oh, so you went new school on the paint. Yeah, and it's it's a base coat, clear coat. It's got a, uh, lot of, a lot of work in it. It looks good. I mean, it really is good. From one angle, it looks black. I go to another <laughs> angle, and I see that blue in it, that rich, dark blue. Then you got this, the rims on these things. This is old school, new school again. Yes. Because the, it's kind of the old school rims. It's the old school rim, but they're 17s. Yes. Are these 17s all the way around? Yes. So you kept that profile with that look. Why 17s for this Mustang? It's, it's got some old and it's got some new. And it, it's a crossover of, of, of both, you know, all styles. Right. That's what caught our attention because yeah. it really did look old school. But you've got the cowling on, the rims, the tires, the, the way it sets. But when I came by, I saw that engine. <laughs> and it really did turn my head. I, I love that engine, the way it looks. Well, I'm going to ask you one question. It's what I always ask. Can I hear this bad boy? Sure. All right, Mark, next thing in line for tools you use, the shear. Right. Why would you use a shear to cut metal over the plasma? You can use a variety of things to use cut metal. Mm -hmm. This cuts straight lines much quicker than any other thing we've got. Okay, and we're going to use this now to cut the, the beak. Correct. Because long beak, mm -hmm. long piece of metal. Yep. So I get the piece of metal here, and we've already got the template already drawn out. So I need to get it in there and line it up. I just need to push down, grab. It's kind of like kick-starting old Harley, isn't it? Kind of, okay, yeah, a little like... bit. Yeah, and my Harley never started on the first Friday anyway either, so it's, it was good. <laughs> we now have two pieces of metal for our beak. Correct. I think we're ready to go. Well, from the next stage, we'll yeah. be go over to the brake. The brake. We're gonna bend these me this metal. So the brake press is next for this. Brake is next. All right. And when you're using a brake press, again, for body molding, what are you using it for? All this machine does is bend metal into a certain 90 degree or 45, whatever degree you want. So the big thing is to find my center. Now, put one beak up. We already got this cut down and lined up. So we'll brace it down. So there's one side. There's the other side. Brace and just bend it. Simple as that. Very simple. Okay, Mark, we're at the shrinker here. You call it a shrinker, but what is the purpose of the shrinker? Well, by putting a piece of metal in here, in this set of dies, it actually has teeth in it that grip it, and by stepping on them, putting them together, it actually draws the metal together. There's also another die in there that's an expander, and it does the opposite. So when it draws the metal together, you're actually putting a little curve to it. In this application, yes. So all I need to do is put this in here, and just start pushing down on it? Push, push down on it. You can feel it when it grips. Yeah. It starts to move. And it's gripping it down. And now we do have a little bit more of a curve here. When we come back, we're gonna see how we assemble this, but I'm gonna continue with this. It's always fun to go to a car show and see family. And when we were in Scranton, Cy found his brother-in-law, so you know we had to talk to him. His 41 Chevy is next on Street Rotting American Style. I found my brother-in-law. This is Sam. And Sam has been an inspiration for me. If you know me, you know I like old school hot rods. And this dude built this sucker. Sam, what is this? It's a 1941 Chevrolet two-door sedan. In 1941, the first gold record was presented to Glenn Miller for Chattanooga Choo Choo. The first U.S. commercial FM radio station went on the air in Nashville, Tennessee. 
and Joe DiMaggio started his 56 game hitting streak. You built this thing from the ground up. In, did it take one car, two cars, three cars, four cars? It took uh, two and a half cars. You, so you bought two and a half cars to put this I bought this, thing this car and I bought another car and then I bought half of another car. Yeah. It's two and a half cars. That's two and a half cars. So, did you count that on your hands, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it an unfinished hot rod? Is it a rat rod? Is, it's not a street rod. Is it an old school hot rod, a vintage hot rod? What do you call this? Hey, this is my hot rod. What do you think everybody else calls it? Junk. One of the things I noticed about this thing, the dash is all rusted out. And yeah, that's exactly how it was when we found it. But a lot of guys see that and they think rat rod right away, but it's not a rat rod. It's just an unfinished it's hot just, rod. It's just I didn't, I, I actually wanted to drive it. I got so tired of working on it because my garage is 24 by 24. Yeah. Did you just dent my car? I didn't dent it. I shut your door <laughs> okay. all the way. Is that going to be a problem? Negative. Okay. No. What was the hardest part about this build? Actually, it was after we got it running to get it to where it didn't bounce that far off the ground when you stepped on the gas. What was the deal? No shocks? Uh, just the, the, I had to put traction bars. I had to build some traction bars for it. So, guys usually put traction bars on when they got a lot of meat on their hood, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? It's just a little old 454. Yeah, tiny. It's yeah. tiny. Do you ever uh, break it loose? No. Look at me. Yeah, you look, you I'm look, respectable. You look like look an at upstanding me. citizen. I am an upstanding citizen. <laughs> I, I, he's an upstanding citizen. I can, I can vouch for him. You know what though, this is what I really like about this car though, is we're sitting here and you're cool with it, and we can hang out right here and just enjoy Hot Run, enjoy the car show, and have a good time. Right. It's awesome. Yeah, man. you can't sit on that other guy's car. I don't want to sit on that guy's, it's, it's a pretty <laughs> car. This is pretty, but it's a different kind of pretty. Oh yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Now in 41, they had a two piece glass, right? Yes, they did. You've got a one piece in there, is that glass? No, that'd be plexiglass. And you built this car yourself? Right. You put the plexiglass in? Yeah. When was the last time you washed it? <laughs> one year ago. One year ago, did you wax it? No. No. <laughs> I sprayed some WD-40 on it. That's a lot of guys do that, don't they? They put a little bit of WD-40 on the flat and it kind of gives it that satin look, makes it look clean sure. and polished kind of. It's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's cool. I like it. I did it to mine a lot. Yeah. So I liked it because it just, it took the dirt off of it. But. Dude, a lot of guys name their cars. Does this thing have a name? Yeah. What's its name? Thursday. Why Thursday? <laughs> we bought it on Thursday. <laughs> awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, man, I tell you what, one more question for you. Okay. Can we hear this bad boy? Absolutely. Fire up Thursday. All right. <laughs> All the parts are now ready to be assembled. We're gonna, how are we gonna assemble these things? We're gonna assemble it with our MIG welder today. With a MIG welder. All right, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna tack the feet under the base with the wire welder. Okay, Great. and again, how much? Safety. Safety. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. I got a good beat on not there. Bad. Oh, I not thought it was bad. pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. So we got the side, it's braced on there. Right. We're gonna finish welding this up and we'll go to the next step. Right. All right. Mark, it is done. This is pretty cool. I mean, I'm impressed with this thing. But you were able to show me the equipment you use when fabricating the car parts and all that for the frame, for the body. You kind of made a little, well, it's not really a hood ornament. It is a yard ornament. It is a bird. But I thank you very much for showing us. Now, well, it is kind of, it's pretty clean looking. And I, I don't know if that's the way you kind of, you want to finish it that way or not? For a little patina, a little rust look, we could sandblast it and oh. spray it with vinegar and water. And it will rust it real quick. For the rat rod lovers and elephants. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So just vinegar and water, 50-50 okay. of each. Spray it down. And watch it work. About three or four days? Three have four something days, all yeah, it starts resting almost immediately. All right, and if you want to do this your car, vinegar and water. Three or four days, you got yourself a nice rat rod. Well, sort of. Mark, thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. I took Mark's advice. I got the patina look by the vinegar and water. It's all sprayed down, it's looking pretty good. But what am I gonna do with it? Well, I think I know who I'm gonna give it to. You watch. Whoa, 
That must be that hood ornament I ordered. Sure looked a lot smaller online. Don't let anybody tell you that building street rods is not an art. We found this masterpiece and its artist, Michael, in Wichita, Kansas. It's next on Street Rodding American Style. Michael, sweet, sweet, and I'm gonna say it again, sweet ride. What am I looking at here? Well, you're looking at a 1934 Ford Five Window Coupe. In 1934, John Dillinger broke out of jail using a wooden pistol. Female Babe Didrikson pitched a hitless inning for the Philadelphia A's against the Brooklyn Dodgers. And Shirley Temple appeared in her first movie, Stand Up and Cheer. Uh, it's got a 1950 Oldsmobile uh, rocket motor in it. Right, now see, okay, when I came up to this thing and I saw it, that stuck out to me very much because it's a rocket. That's it. One thing about the chrome that I noticed are the headers. Yes. And what I like about the headers is that heat tent that has happened to them. Yes. Was that on purpose? Did you know that was going to happen? Yeah, I did. I because did. it's great. Yeah, a lot of people said I ought to go to aluminum or what have you, but I kind of like the blowing effect. I, I think, do. I think it kind of adds a little bit of interest and, uh, and it shows that, that it's used and that's what this car was built for right. to, to be driven. You're an artist, I understand. Is that true? Yes. Did you put any artistic impression of your own personality into this? Well, I, I, I like the images of uh, some of the radical cars of mm -hmm. that era. Right. Uh, in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, I, I think it had some nice des design elements. They were a little bit more radical and extreme right. than some of the cars as far as the rake and the way they put the, the proportions of the car, and that's what I tried to incorporate. You in. said rake. And that's what really I noticed. There's several things about, about this that I think is just Im impressive. First off, how the streamline of the, of the roof comes down. But it just seems like everything just kind of steps down. Was that on purpose or did you just fall into that? Well, it, it was on purpose. I, I guess you could say, <clears throat> uh, as I built the car, I, I looked at it as an object, right. as, as, as an art, as being an illustrator. But I wanted the car to, to have it a feel to where each thing had had a step to it. Yeah. Where the flow would come up and, and it'd still take on a wedge design, yeah. even though it, it doesn't have a full smooth sheet metal surface. And uh, also that rake that we talked about as part of that, that effect. And that's, yes. I, th I think, is what I'm trying to, to achieve. Uh, Why do you do the fenders the way you did? Because these are a little different with the bicycle yeah, fenders. Yeah. Well, actually, they're uh, old spare tire covers cut down and they came off of a. Uh, Oh, a 29 Roadster, but they also, uh, I raked them back a little bit mm -hmm. and dropped them down, and I, I hope they'll help with a little bit of the rocks and whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, you're not throwing any stones, are you? Yeah, but mainly they're for looks, I'd say. It's great. Talk about looks. I'm going to go way back to the backside here. All right. That Nerf bar. Yes. Where'd you get that Nerf bar at? Harley Davidson pullback handlebars. No flipped, way. Yeah, flipped upside down and modified. Those are Harley Davidson handlebars flipped upside down. That's it. You just didn't matter if manufacturer just got to bend a chrome bar. No, nope, didn't bend them. That looks great. Well, thanks. That was, uh, I tried to tried to incorporate a lot of old uh, farm boy ingenuity in here. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about farm boy ingenuity because you, you you piece things together that you can find, right? Right. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the metal sheeting that you have on the inside of the doors. There's also like holes you have punched out on the side where the uh, fenders are, has that same type of metal fabrication. Where'd you get that idea? Well, um, the holes in the body, they were in there. This, I'm sure, had some kind of old hot rod race right. car history, and they were there cut out for lightning holes. Right. And uh, But when I did the door panels, I decided to incorporate some of that expanded aluminum. Uh, uh, I, I will have to admit that the, the aluminum door panels uh, inserts are a little newer. I, I did get those at Home, home Depot. From Home Depot. <laughs> These are from Home Depot. That's it, yeah. Great plug, but that's yeah. great. Uh, the biggest modification on here, uh, Dave, is the firewall uh, on the 34 Ford. They kind of step down and come out about 15 inches farther. Right. But uh, with the suicide type front end, it would have made the car way long and out of proportion. So you got the suicide front end, right. you got suicide doors. That's it. You just yeah. live a life on the edge, don't oh, you? Oh, it's pretty dangerous it's today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, it's a pleasure. This was a great car. Thank well, you so much for letting us see it. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Side, that was a great idea, dedicating today's show to those yeah. cars that we miss. Yeah, they're cool cars, oh, they man. Were. We got to talk about what you find. All right, remember when we were in Osage City? Right. 
I met John. He's got this 1944 coupe. And man, I picked that thing up because everything about that car was old school cool. Nostalgic. Dude, it was uh, the stance was awesome. Yep. Just a jet black. The reversed chrome with the white walls. You can't go wrong. Dude, black it chrome. spoke to my heart. That's a hot rod, man. Right. Then I find my brother-in-law, Sam. Of course. Yeah, he's in Scranton. Yeah. He's got his 41 Chevy. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, he, he's family, man. And I, I have always just admired that guy because the stuff he builds right. is just, and he makes it cool. That thing's cool and just screams hot rod. It did. How about you? What'd you find? Well, first, it was Jim's 65 Mustang. The look was old school mixed with new school. Yes. But the engine is what made me look. Not once, but twice. Dude, Not, but even sweet. three times yeah. because it had a tri-power yeah. setup. Very cool. Then I also found Michael's 34 Ford. He's also an artist, and it was very evident in his street ride creation. But again, it was the engine. It was an old sweet. rocket engine. Sweet. So I myself always enjoy finding those sweet rides, and we want to share those sweet rides with you next week. Yeah, so you better join us, and you'll see why street riding is more than just a hobby. It is an addiction. Support for Street Riding American Style is provided in part by Kansas BG Incorporated, a distributor of BG products. Kansas BG is dedicated to the development of preventative maintenance service in vehicles for consumers and fleets. Kansas BG provides the driving community with products and services of automotive maintenance. More information can be found on the web at kansasbg.com and bgfindashop.com. And Ren Radio. Ren Radio can be heard from the web on your computer or smartphone, playing oldies from the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. Oldies like Elvis, Chuck Berry, and the Skyliners, and many more. Nothing but oldies. Ren Radio is online all the time, on the web at wrenradio.net. <laughs>